What is up everyone, it's Joe from Get Good Drums, back with another little tutorial. Uh, today we're talking about distortion and how you can use it to sort of achieve some different results uh, when mixing drums. I've got Mod Infusion loaded up here. Uh, I chose this one because it's kind of our cleanest one kit wonder. Um, what I'll show you in this, you can apply to any drum mix, you can apply to any drum library. Um, just, I always like using the one kit wonders for these tutorials because they're pre-processed, so, uh, I don't have to go in and, and create an entire drum mix just to get the sort of point across that I want to for these videos. Um, so it saves me a lot of time, but you can use these with, you know, the original Halpern pack, Modern Massive Invasion, or the P4, uh, or indeed any of our one kit wonders. Um, they're just ideas that you can then use and apply in any way you want. But I wanted to show you how a little bit of distortion on different parts of the drum kit can uh, yield pretty drastic and powerful results. So this is the drum mix we're running with. I've rooted it out to uh, Logic, just a very basic kick, snare, toms, overhead, and rooms. Uh, I've got the effects, which is the parallel and reverb coming through the first channel. Um, as you can see, I've got a different distortion plug-in on each of these channels, which I will walk you through. But this is what it sounds like. And I'll just show you what it sounds like with and without the processing. So again, this is with. And without. So actually a pretty drastic difference for um, surprisingly little processing. So let's look at the kick. If I just solo it, this is what we're sounding like currently. And if I put on my processing. So kind of a bit scooped, a bit more uh, metallic. Sometimes I see some comments. I've seen a couple comments on the Facebook forum, facebook.com slash groups slash GGG forum. Sometimes sort of saying that they want Aurora sort of more dirty sound from one of the GGD libraries that they've got. Um, and using distortion is a fantastic way to achieve that. And that's why I chose Modern Fusion, because it's kind of like the cleanest of the Wonkit Wonders we've done. And these effects I've put on have kind of made it a little bit more sort of dutty. Not loads, but if you push these further, you definitely achieve that. But so yeah, so for the kick, I've got Fab Filter Satin. You've probably seen this a lot in our tutorials, but we love it. Um, it's a multi-band distortion saturation plugin, basically. Um, so I've got my crossover at 839. I've actually disabled this bottom one. I kind of want to keep the low end as it is. I don't want to affect the sort of boom and sustain. I like that. But I have applied some saturation to this top end. As you can see, I'm using the gentle saturation uh, circuit algorithm thing, and I've got it at 84%. So this is applying some saturation to um, everything above 839 hertz, essentially. And as you can hear, it kind of creates like a bit more of a scooped metal kick. I'll just A-B it. In the mix, it makes quite a big difference. So that's a really big difference, um, I think. And it very much changes the character of the kick in this library. Much more suitable, as I said, to like sort of a metal genre. 
got a bit more of that metallic attack um, that you might want. There's kind of not much anything more to say about this, really. It's just as you see, one split and gentle saturation drive up. You can push it further. Or dial it back. And you can really sort of go to town with this. If you apply some different ones, so let's see, warm tube. So as you can hear, they all have different effects, some desirable, some not, but um, it's also a really cool sound design tool, this, if you think about getting a bit crazy. Um, so let's move on to the snare. For this, I'm using Sound Toys Decapitator. Uh, this is quite a common thing to put on snare. Uh, I really love it. I used to kind of depend on it, um, and I stopped using it to try and sort of achieve it different ways, just because it, it definitely has a sound. Um, but I really love it in certain contexts, and it's a very useful tool to have in your arsenal. Um, it's different distortion circuits um, or saturation. I've What I've done here is I've just lowered the output because it does add volume. I've put the drive up to around 5, and I've got it on the T circuit, and I've also changed this dark bright tone to brighten it up slightly. This, uh, to my ear, it sort of brings the snare, it gives it some more focus and some weight to it. Um, it makes it sound a tiny bit more boxy, but I don't mind it. But you might want to counteract some of that with some EQ if you're not a fan, but I personally dig it. So I'll A-B that, start with it off. And on. Off. And on. So as you can hear, as I said, it brings out uh, some snap, some volume, and a tiny bit more boxiness. I really like how it sounds, and you can push it further. I'll dial it back. But to me, it really brings the snare sort of into the center and pushes it into your chest a bit. Um, and it's great for sort of raw -er genres like post-rock or hardcore. I really love using it for. As I said, I've got this bright knob turned up a bit. I'll just show you what it's like without it. Yeah, again, like, it's a very simple plug-in that just goes a really long, long way. And again, it just kind of adds a bit of aggression to it, I think, which I really like. Um, this next one is Sound Toys again, uh, but the Devil Lock Audio Level Destroyer. Uh, so let's find some toms. So again, kind of just making it a bit more aggressive. Bringing up some of that attack, bringing out some of the sustain because it's destroying the level. I've got it all on zero, apart from the crunch. Uh, I really liked how it sounds. It kind of brings the body a bit further towards you. Um, I'll just accentuate the crunch and see what you think. So as you can hear, it gets pretty crazy, which is why I've only got it on like two to three. Definitely adds some more high end, so you could counteract this with a bit of darkness. Uh, 
I personally like it though. Um, again, another really cool tool. This would be also great on snare, I think. Be similar to the decapitator, but a bit more sort of grimy. Um, but again, just another tool for the toolbox, something you can mess around with. Um, I, I really like it on toms and I use it quite a lot. And then finally, we've got Logic's stock overdrive plugin on the overheads. This might not be to everyone's taste putting it on the overheads. I use it on hi-hats sometimes when I want a bit more crunch out of one. Um, I personally like it, especially in those sort of like genres like hardcore where you want it to sound a bit rougher. Um, so I'll A-B this for you. So what I'm hearing here is it really sort of brings the cymbals uh, closer towards you to make it sound a bit more sort of claustrophobic, um, makes them sound a bit trashier, not quite as pure and clean, um, and adds a small amount of kind of like thumping to it, uh, like almost like a compressor. Again, this is a great way to sort of dirty up uh, any of our libraries if you want. It's also really cool on rooms. If you're familiar with the Logic plugin, for some reason when you load it up, it starts at 100 hertz, which obviously you don't want. And only 2.25 dBs I'm running. The 0.25 is incidental. Um, again, with distortion on drums, you don't want to go crazy unless you're doing it for a sound design effect. A little certainly goes a long, long way. I've got level compensation on because I don't want it to um, change the level too much. To some, this may seem really obvious and like, oh yeah, of course you can use distortion for that. But um, I remember it sort of really changing how I viewed mixing because uh, a lot of the time, to me, a lot of mixing is trying to clean up things, if you know what I mean, to fix some of the sort of imperfections. Um, and I think it's really good to do that, but then sometimes it's fun to try and add those back in as well. Especially if you're trying to make a recording sound a bit raw, a bit more organic. Um, saturation and distortion are definitely your friends in those two settings. You can see I've actually left this room channel without any distortion. Um, that's because I thought we could work it out together. So let's just solo it and mess around with some different distortion plugins I have and see what we come up with. That's actually really cool. Uh, so this is the Softube saturation plugin. Uh, there is a big level jump, so it's kind of hard to AB. Uh, what am I doing? So what this is doing, which I think is cool, is uh, it's not really doing much to everything apart from the snare drum. Because um, as I've got the faders inside One Kit Wonder Modern Fusion set up, the snare drum's loudest in the room, um, which kind of imitates that thing, a technique of using a snare sample to reinforce the snare to kind of give it some explosion. Sorry, I just hit the mic. Um, so it's really saturating the snare explosion in the room mics which and giving it some distortion. And it kind of makes the snare in the mix sound a bit bigger and a bit dirtier, which I really like. Mm -hmm. 
Awesome. So there's something I haven't I haven't used it before. I just clicked it by chance, but I actually really like how that sounds. So let's A B the entire mix with these different distortion types on the drums. Cool, guys. Well, there you go. We've taken a really clean, modern, pristine, polished sounding drum kit and made it a bit dirtier and a bit more aggressive. So uh, I hope you found these insights and techniques useful and you can really sort of go to town with them and use them uh, a whole bunch of ways. Um, but as ever, I hope this was informative, fun and uh, inspiring. Uh, check out our YouTube and our blog for more videos um, and I will catch you next time. Thank you very much.